Good morning. Welcome to the forecast discussion for Friday, February 16th, 2018. This is going to be a combination forecast discussion for the premium section, the public section, and also Fire Island and beyond. Hello, guys. And the reason why is that uh, we're going to be dealing with a very complicated forecast. And I want to explain my forecast, which you can see here, and the reason why it's different from the National Weather Service forecast, which is significantly more snowfall for the New York City Metro and also for the Philadelphia Metro. Whereas my forecast is, well, it's a little bit closer in the Philadelphia Metro, not so much on the Jersey Shore, but significantly different in the New York City Metro. So what I want to do is, rather than say, well, I like my forecast and that's it, um, as some do, um, I want to explain what's happening here, okay, and walk you through what I'm seeing what they may be seeing, why they may be going with the forecast that they're going for. And it all comes down to location and lifting. Everything comes down to the forecast on this. I'm going to show you why in some of the guidance. And I'm actually going to walk you through a uh, the NAM model guidance that is coming out right now. Um, so uh, it should be interesting to kind of see what I do when I'm forecasting. I think it'll be a little bit of fun. So currently, it's raining. Quite a bit of rain and we have a cold front that is moving through with very mild temperatures in place temperatures ranging from the mid to upper 40s over the interior upper 40s to lower 50s in the suburbs and lower to mid 50s along the coast even some upper 50s to lower 60s you, know, you gotta love this time of year 60 degrees and a snowstorm gotta love it but a cold front is moving through so pretty much we're seeing our high temperatures now and then they're going to kind of meander for the rest of the morning and then start to fall through the 50s into the 40s and eventually into the 30s as cold air builds into the region. In the meantime, we'll be dealing with waves of moderate to heavy rainfall. Here's our cold front moving through. This area of low pressure is really enhancing the rainfall over western Pennsylvania, and that's going to head towards our neck of the woods, mostly focus on the Philadelphia metro and southern and central New Jersey, but it will also clip portions of Long Island and New York City as well. It's going to miss out in Connecticut. I think you guys have seen the worst of your rainfall for today in Connecticut and the Hudson River Valley and the Poconos. Then this high pressure system takes hold tonight through tomorrow. And this high pressure system is going to have a major impact on the region because it is going to bring some very cold air into the region for about 12 hours. By tomorrow morning, we'll have lows back in the lower to mid 20s and it is going to feel very cold. But that high pressure system isn't sticking around. It's leaving very quickly. So by the time we get to tomorrow afternoon, the entire region is in the upper 30s to lower 40s. That includes the interior. That includes the coast with a southeasterly wind at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we begin the questioning of this winter forecast. So currently the radar, you can see periods of rainfall moving through. That's going to continue on. This portion right here is what I was talking about. It will head towards the Philadelphia Metro. Clip The northern side of it will clip portions of the New York City Metro. But the worst rainfall is going to be down here and, of course, towards the Delmarva Peninsula, Baltimore, and Washington as this cold front moves through. On the infrared satellite picture, you can see pretty impressive. And down here, these are all low clouds, and that's why it's cloudy out there. It's what we call stratus. Here are your high clouds, the colder cloud tops. So these are more cumulus uh, cloud tops, and what they basically show is strong lifting over the region. This will eventually move through. By the time we get to the evening rush hour, skies will start to clear out, and it's going to look a lot better out there. A lot better visibility will be in place. Now we use my favorite tool, the water vapor satellite picture. So here we have a, clearly right now in place a nice stream of tropical moisture coming from the tropical Pacific and heading right into our neck of the woods. This will become suppressed. We have a strong upper level low over here, the part of the polar vortex, sitting around the Hudson Bay and suppressing the pattern. We also what we call a negative NAO pattern starting to develop out here in the Canadian Maritimes. That's going to lead to also convergence. But we also have a nice ridge that is down in the Gulf Coast. Now, what we are watching for as we move forward here is this short wave right here, okay? This is what's going to be our storm. And quite frankly, it doesn't look all that impressive. In fact, let's take a different look. 
This is our short wave right here. This is what's supposed to produce a major winter storm. My problem is that as I look at this from my point of view, this is not a very well-developed short wave. It's rather, well, weak and disorganized. Uh, it's strung out. It has no indication of showing any type of amplification whatsoever. So it's a weak short wave coming in and it's moving into a rather unfavorable environment as it heads towards the East Coast for tomorrow evening. And that's why I'm a bit suspicious about this high snow forecast. There is one way to get it, and I'm gonna show you how that happens, but the observations here clearly are not supporting a vigorous short wave that would support strong lifting, that would lead to a heavy snowfall, to lead to strong lifting to cool the environment enough to support a heavy snowfall. So I want to start off first with showing you why there's a chance for the National Weather Service forecast to verify. And it comes down to this. Now what we have here is what we call omega. Okay, What that basically means is lifting in the atmosphere. And the reason why omega is so so key, okay, Omega is the difference in pressure from the surface to, let's say, about 700 millibars in this case. You could also have that from the surface to 500 millibars. So lower, the lower the pressure, the, the lower the difference, let's say it's minus 6, that means air is rapidly rising. In this case, they have minus 6 to minus 9 moving along the coast from 11 p.m. to about 4 a.m., okay? So this feature here is the primary way how you get heavy snowfall. And this is why the National Weather Service is going very aggressive. The reason why this is very important is that the surface temperatures are relatively warm. We're talking about 35, 34 degrees um, around midnight at the heart of this precipitation event. So what you would need in order to have this wet snowfall which is going to have a ratio around 8 to 1 to 10 to 1 to verify and to accumulate, you have to have strong lifting to rapidly cool the surface to allow snowfall accumulation. So, as a result, what you get here on the latest NAM model guidance, and I'll show you the, Euro the European as well, you get this strong lifting. Now, this is from 06Z. Now, you see this, this portion right here? tracking up towards Long Island, this is very heavy precipitation, all right? Notice the surface temperature is above freezing. So what we're, what we're showing here is that in order for heavy snowfall to accumulate in this environment, this snowfall rate has to be enhanced, roughly by an inch per hour, okay? If that happens, then you get snow accumulation as shown by the National Weather Service. If you don't, well, then you get far less snowfall. And in fact, when we take a look at the model guidance, on the European guidance, it keeps that lifting off the coast. Okay? It keeps it to the south and east. And while 850 millibar temperatures are supportive for snow, it's a bit marginal, especially on the coastal plain. And with the surface temperatures above freezing, it leads to an environment where if you don't have very strong lifting to cool the environment, then the snow accumulation, especially on a treed surface, becomes that much difficult, especially after having southeasterly winds warm the surface for at least 12 hours before the storm. So as a result, you end up with, on the European guidance, some heavier precipitation, clearly cold enough at the mid-levels, but not at the surface. And so as a result, on the model solution, again, this is to model snow maps, you end up with this result, which is actually pretty close to my going forecast. Um, this, again, is from the European guidance. Now, again, this takes into the fact that, okay, boundary layer temperatures, the lifting stays off the coast, like right around here. And so as a result, you stay in the mid-30s. Anything that falls will be mixed with snow and rain, and it will have a difficult time accumulating. I'm a little bit more aggressive, but going a bit more two to four and one to three over here, as you can see back here. A little bit more aggressive than the European guidance has out, but you get the general idea here 
where the best potential for accumulating snowfall is back here to the west, north and west, in a colder environment overall. Again, you don't take this verbatim, but what does this show you? Again, this is the European Ensemble Guidance. What is the model trying to tell you? The model is trying to tell you that unless you have intense lifting okay, to cool the atmosphere, to cool the surface, you're not going to get accumulating snowfall based on what the model is saying. Now, I think this might be a little too warm, as you can see with the forecast I have out, but you get the idea here. If the lifting isn't on the coast, like right on the coastal plain, you don't get that snowfall result. And so that's why the volatility here is so high and why in the winter storm watches that were issued, they're more kind of like 50-50. Yeah, this could happen or it could not and we'll adjust later. I get the idea here. So let's take a look at the latest NAM model guidance that's coming out for 12Z. So here is the new NAM model guidance that's coming out right now. This is a 12Z. Now look what it does here. We'll start at zero and you can see there is our short wave right here. Not exactly very impressive. So it dives through the Rockies very, very quickly, rapidly moving through the plains tomorrow morning and then heading towards the northern mid-Atlantic tomorrow evening. Notice it is not digging as much, it's not as amplified, and it's moving very fast. And the strongest PVA, that's the lifting at 500 millibars, is focused towards New England, not the coastal waters. Very interesting. And, and the short wave is, well, rather flat and very fast moving. So we know that this is going to be a fast moving low pressure system. The question is, of course, where is the lifting going to set up, as I've been discussing? And what do we have here at 700 millibars? Well, by the time we get to tomorrow evening, moisture starts to build in. Now, what we're looking for is intense omega values. And what we're noticing here is that they're mostly staying off the coast. They're staying generally to the south. And what does that generally mean? When we take a look at the precipitation values as a result, we can learn a lot about this storm. Okay, so here's what, what we have in place on the evening, Saturday evening. Snow showers trying to develop. Looks like there's pretty good dry air in place as well. This, keep an eye on this. This is 540 decameters. And this is the thickness, okay? When you see this, okay, rising and falling, that tells you how, how deep the cold air is. And so generally, when I take a look at this as we move through the evening, you can see this 540 line really doesn't move all that much. And notice your heavy precipitation is found over central and southern New Jersey. You have your thickness line basically stalled over central New Jersey. Your heaviest precipitation is over southern New Jersey. Your freezing line at 850 millibars is basically around southern New Jersey. But at the surface, your freezing line is well to the north. So what does this tell me? That there is a lot of warm air to the south of 850, to below 850 millibars. So this would be a mix of rain and snow right here. And we know that because of what's happening here with the thickness here. We also know that the lifting via this very heavy precipitation off the coast is clearly focused off the coast. And you have more light to moderate precipitation here. Okay, now it's certainly cold enough to support snow accumulation in these areas, okay, with temperatures below freezing at the surface, all the way up to 850 millibars. But that is not the case in Long Island and the New York City metro. These temperatures are above freezing. And your best lifting is focused off the coast based on this one model guidance. So we have to wait for all the 12Z model guidance to come out and uh, really break all that down. But basically what we're seeing here is that the model guidance, the newest model guidance, that 12Z is coming out and picking up that the best lifting is focusing off the coast. And that's gonna be key. Now you are gonna have some lifting because obviously you're gonna have precipitation, but you need that intense uh, high snowfall rate scenario to take place in order for there to be accumulation uh, on the coastal plain, especially ones that would exceed six inches. 
So we're going to have to watch that very carefully. It's going to be something that, quite frankly, we'll have to now cast just to make sure. But this is the first 12Z mile sweep to come out, clearly showing your best lifting is focusing to the south of Long Island and to the east of New Jersey. And we'll see how that evolves as we move on with the rest of the mile guidance and see whether we end up with the same scenario. So again, this is the forecast we have in place. After all of this leaves, well, things start to improve. So let's go through the rest of this forecast. For again, for today, periods of rain, temperatures in the mid to upper 50s, falling through the 40s, 30s, and into the 20s by tomorrow morning with high pressure in control. Tomorrow evening, clouds increase, snow begins to develop, highs in the upper 30s to lower 40s throughout the entire region. We talked about our snowfall threat for Saturday night, tomorrow night, through Sunday morning. We'll see exactly where that lifting sets up. But in my opinion right now, the best potential is for the interior, as you can see here, with three to six inches to the north and west of the major cities, around the major metro areas, one to three inches, two to four inches, just to the northwest, and then over New Jersey, central and southern New Jersey, about a trace to an inch before changing over to rain. Again, a lot of this is going to be on cold surfaces. Temperatures on Sunday morning will range from the upper 20s to lower 30s, rapidly rising by the time we get to the afternoon with skies clearing in the mid to upper 40s. So anything that does accumulate is going to melt. On Monday, high pressure will be in control with sky cloud cover. Watch out for a few isolated showers in the evening. Look for lows in the mid 20s, highs in the upper 40s to lower 50s. On Tuesday, a warm front will move through with scattered showers. Look for lows in the upper 40s to lower 50s. Highs in the upper 50s to lower 60s on Long Island, mid to upper 60s everywhere else. On Wednesday, a cold front will approach with isolated to widely scattered showers. Look for temperatures to range from the mid 50s for lows and upper 60s to lower 70s for much of the region, upper 50s to mid 60s on Long Island. On Thursday, high pressure remains in control with scattered cloud cover, watch out for a few isolated showers in the evening hours. Our low temperatures will be in the upper 50s to lower 60s. High temperatures in the upper 50s to mid 60s on Long Island and mid 60s to lower 70s for the rest of the region. Then on Friday, reality returns with high pressure in place, scattered cloud cover expected, lows in the mid 30s, highs in the mid to upper 40s. So we have a snow threat, we have well above normal temperatures, we have rainfall, we got a mix of everything. So I'll keep you posted on what to expect for the storm. Look for afternoon updates after all the guidance comes out, and we'll have a nice, interesting period of weather for this weekend. Thank you, and as always, stay safe out there.